used MIG One Shot Primer for the past year. This will be the fifth model that I've primed using it. I understand that One Shot is actually repackaged Badger Steinal Res Primer. MIG One Shot Primer is used straight from the bottle without thinning. It's a little bit thick, so it requires a fairly high air pressure. They recommend 20 to 30 PSI. I've been spraying at 22 PSI with good results. The only downside that I've seen using MIG One Shot is you need to clean your airbrush immediately after use or it'll gum it up pretty bad. So I'm after I'm done using it, I completely disassemble my airbrush and clean it thoroughly. After spraying my model with one shot primer, I'll let the model sit for 24 hours to make sure the primer has had plenty of time to cure before moving on in the painting process. I decided to paint the gun barrel German gray. I've seen some artist renderings of late war German tanks with gray gun barrels. I assume those are some sort of field service replacement. But I thought it would add visual interest and my thinking was, well, perhaps very late in the war that the guns were supplied gray and the factory just installed them that way and didn't bother to paint them. It looks here like I'm applying a second coat of primer, which I guess in a sense I am. Everything was in such short supply in the German industry in the late war that even paint was scarce. And again, I've seen artist renderings of late war tanks where they left the factory in primer. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to paint it primer red, and I'm going to use that as the base color for the tank.
thought the whole red I used for the primer was a little bit dark. So what I did is I mixed in a little bit of red and yellow to brighten up the primer color a little bit. Painting the road wheels late war dunkel gelb, yeah, primarily for visual interest, and it makes a nice contrast to the primer red main structure. I like to mix my paint thin. In this instance, it's probably 60% thinner and 40% paint. And I shoot it at kind of a low pressure, so I think I shot about 13 PSI. Wanted some kill rings on the barrel, so I used some blue painter's tape and then cut a mask, taped off the barrel, and brush painted on the kill rings. I should put the mud and snow up under the tank before uh, I put the side skirts on. I didn't know how much access I'd have once the skirts were on, so I went ahead and did it now.
dabbing on MIG wet earth with a micro brush and it gets it up in there pretty much anywhere you need to have it and it kind of just speckled it on there so it looked uneven and not too smooth After applying the mud, then I applied MIG dry earth and the, the wet mud still still wet and it doesn't matter because I'm going to put this up in the upper part of the structure and then I'm going to blend it down into the wet mud. I have the wet mud and the dry earth applied and have them blended together. It looks pretty nice. So, I guess I'll just cover it all up with snow now. The AK Snow is a thick acrylic paste and I took a little bit out of the container, put it on a little plastic lid, used a micro brush and applied it. And I kept it down on the lower part of the chassis except on the rear idler and the front drive sprocket. And in those areas I applied it all the way up to the top of the hole section. Once I had the snow applied to an area, then I went back and used a little bit of a stippling motion with the, with the uh, micro brush. And I tried to keep the snow from being too smooth.
painting the tracks with dark rust color. You know, initially, once they were all painted black with the primer, that was good, but you know, after that, I sprayed the primer red and then the Dunkel Gelb, so got to go back and touch up the tracks and get them all one color again. Time for camouflage. It's just a two color camo scheme, primer red and the late war dunkel gelb. I'm using the drawing that came with the kit and I'm trying to get it very similar to the drawing except for I'm going to reverse the colors. For a complicated camo scheme like this, what I do is I take the camouflage color and I mix it very thin. And then I take my fine paintbrush and I paint the outline of the scheme onto the tank. And I make sure it's very thin so when I apply the camouflage paint that the paint will cover up my uh, outline.
camouflage pattern turned out pretty nice. I like how it looks. I guess my only complaint would be is I have a little more overspray than I would like. And what I should have done is I probably should have turned the pressure down on the compressor a little bit since my paint mixture was pretty thin. But, uh, you know, as I went into it and I was spraying the paint and I saw that I had a little bit of overspray and I thought, well, I'm just going to whitewash over the top of all of it so I don't think it'll be noticeable. I didn't use the decals that came with the kit. The uh, tactical numbers were just too large. So I took some decals I had. I have a box where I just throw spare decals in. And I took some decals out of there and used them. They're pretty thin, pretty good quality decals. After applying the decals and blotting them off, I then applied a couple coats of Microsol and then just let the model sit overnight and let the Microsol do its thing. Now just painting items on the model that need to have color before the whitewash. You know, things like the jacking block and end up painting the tracks and those sort of type of things, the jack and the crowbar and wire cutters. And the last step before whitewash is gave it a clear coat, seal everything in, and so when I apply the whitewash and start scrubbing that off, everything underneath it won't be affected.
All right, this video is already long, so we'll end it here. And we'll pick it back up when we start applying the whitewash.